music is very empowering. <laughs> Um, yeah, my name was already mentioned, um, head of Cybercrime Center, and I feel that I'm a little bit odd kid in, on the block. I've never been to a conference like this before. Usually I attend cybercrime conferences or policing conferences, so, so I, I attend, uh, came early this morning here and uh, have listened to all presentations, and, and I have learned a lot, but probably I missed most of the presentations. Um, when I was first contacted and asked whether I would come here to talk to you about cybersecurity and smart city, I initially declined because I didn't think that I had anything valuable to tell you. But um, I was contacted again and then I said yes. But uh, without Googling, what the concept of smart city is, I started to think that, okay, smart city, it's about solid infrastructure, it's about flourishing businesses or government agencies or entities of different types. But in the, in the in very essence of the smart city, I feel that it's about people, and hopefully they are happy, so happy people. But uh, of course, uh, it's about people, but the, the, the kind of um, flip side of the coin is that uh, there are small percentage of people that are trying to take advantage of those happy people. So it's about people in that sense as well, that the, the perpetrators, the bad side, is also, also about people. Um, because I am from public security, I, my presentation is about security. And uh, if you think about basic needs of uh, humankind, human beings, security is one of, the, one of them, very basic need, what we all have and share. We can't be really happy, we can't be very, very um, well, there are people living in terrible situations, and they are existing there, but they, they can't really uh, flourish there. So they have to have a security in their lives, at least the feeling of security. Perception is quite often the, the key here. Not, sometimes people, um, uh, they are not that interested in, in the factual security. They are more interested in feeling that they feel secure. So that is a very important issue. So uh, basic, well, there was one speaker prior to me that said that uh, people tend to remember only three things from presentations. And if you remember one, my message to you is that there's no smartness in any city without security. Take that home. Actually, we can leave all <laughs> home now. <laughs> Okay, um, there are different aspects of smart cities, and uh, I took these uh, on the right-hand side of, of the slide, uh, took these words from several presentations and googling what the smart city concept is all about. And on the left side of, of the uh, slide is about uh, elements of information security. And. Uh, in the middle, there's a human being. When I, again, was thinking of, of this presentation and thought of uh, that the city versus countryside, what's the difference? And if you look at the, the confidentiality, availability and integrity aspects of, uh, of uh, smart city or oh, information security, there's a one major difference is between the people living in cities and in countryside, and uh, that is availability. People living in city is uh, expecting that everything works well, that uh, they have electricity, they have water, they have uh, um, grocery stores. They don't have to prepare for anything really, because the infrastructure works. But people living in countryside, 
they don't have that expectation. They expect that uh, their systems will interrupt every, every uh, autumn, every winter, there will be electricity cuts. So they have to be prepared. And uh, that is kind of a, one fundamental thing that we should teach our citizens living inside uh, cities that they need to prepare as well. And if something really bad happens in city, it will affect a lot of people and uh, there, there's a lot of issues that if they don't prepare themselves, they, there's no help around. Because government officials, officials police, uh, emergency uh, services, they can't provide the service probably for the old people. But the one thing that uh, uh, I'm more... Uh, well, before going into the integrity, but I want to raise the, the confidentiality part, because we have already lost, I mean, uh, different corporations, different, different government agencies have lost billions of records of information over the last years. And uh, thinking of the future, uh, the, the amount of information will increase a lot. So, what do you think will happen? I think we will lose even more information, more personable, person identifiable inf information. Even though you would uh, do everything in your power to protect them, there will be leaks, there will be uh, computer intrusions that uh, will cause more and more data uh, to be preached. But of course you have to do everything in your power to protect them. But the, the key point from this slide is if we lose the integrity of the information, basically we lose it all. If we can't trust our information, if we can't trust our systems, and uh, if the attack to the integrity of the uh, information has been properly conducted, you can't trust your backups. There's no going back to a certain point of time in the history that you, you still can trust the data. The data is corrupted. That's the ultimate nightmare in my, in my view. Security megatrends. You could have a whole seminar about security megatrends and how they imp implicate, uh, how they affect different uh, uh, societies, smart cities. So I can't, can really scratch on the surface on this topic only. Uh, technology I'll skip because it's quite self-evident that it will have great implications and uh, maybe some of the aspects has been raised already today. Climate change is quite evident as well. Uh, polarization affects uh, a lot of people, groups of people, countries are not getting closer to each other, but they are getting away from each other. That will have an implication to sec security. But uh, uh, economic change, meaning money moving west to east from developed uh, countries to developing areas, demographic change. We are aging here in Western societies and the young generations are in, in uh, developing areas. Where they are moving into already crowded cities, uh, so they are going to the areas that the government is not really efficient actor. They are there in different slums, different ghettos, but with access to this venue, for example, they have internet access, they can somehow take advantage of different services uh, we have here in, in, in Helsinki, for example. And uh, of course, uh, economic change, demographic change, migration, all sorts of things will have an implication to security here in Finland. I don't, I don't want to demonize uh, people living in poor area, because we have our own uh, share of kind of a, uh, problems here as well. Uh, 
one of the things that is driving this change, this is, these are the drivers that have been identified by Europol to drive cybercrime. There's cryptocurrencies, anonymity, there's, so technology is there. Cryptocurrency and different type of anonym, anonymization uh, technologies are there. Dark web, online criminal markets, criminal communities, crime as a service. This is driving the growth of cybercrime. But it is also a potential driver to drive different um, uh, growth of different other uh, markets as well. Like, well, I hope that the, no terrorists hear this, but uh, I uh, assume that at some point a terrorist group will buy the services from these markets and utilize them to attack our societies. I don't know if you're familiar with these cases, but you probably you are. Mirai, two years ago, WannaCry, not Petya, global cases, pandemic cases from last uh, a year ago, summer. Uh, the second part, WannaMine and Suomi.fi, these are uh, local cases. They were cases that uh, affected a, a lot of entities, a lot of corporations, a lot of public services around the globe. Cost was billions of dollars. And there was, in to, two of those cases, uh, nation state actors were behind the attacks. At least that was, that has been in, in the media. I have no personal information about those cases. But in other three cases, normal, ordinary young men, young criminals have been behind those cases. And one of the learning from, from these cases, all of them, is that not your organization, your city, may not be the target of the case, but you are just collateral damage. The infection of the malware is getting away, and your systems will be infected, and, uh, and the perpetrators, they don't care. Uh, so you have to be prepared for something that you can't really predict in a way that, uh, in, in that sense, that you could assume that, okay, if these guys are after me, so I protect against them. No, you have to protect from everybody else too. But Suomi.fi case was, uh, the outcome of the, of the case was designed. I have to take a a look at the clock, it's, it's running so fast. So, it's, so you have to be very, very careful about the collateral damage. So, how to prevent it? Well, you can't really prevent it all. You have to get, be prepared to face the, the music, so the goal. So you have to take this issue seriously. You have to implement the technical security, but you have to implement the mental security, so the processes, uh, skill sets that are required. You have to plan and prepare. And uh, the last one, you have to practice for those occasions that your uh, security has failed and uh, your system has been breached. You better prepare, you have to practice, and if you do, you are better off. Okay, there's a, spell, a spelling mistake. When, when something happens, first take a breath. Don't, don't go and do something in, in a hurry, because that would be probably the wrong thing you did. So take a, take a moment. Then implement the plan, what you prepared in the advance, and take action. In that way, you can protect your systems and, and recover from the case, from the attack. 
But uh, the last point I want to make that uh, without security, there's no smartness in any city. Thank you. <laughs>